All right, guys, welcome to part three of the ThinkPad Buyer's Guide Extravaganza. We're in a different location this time because my usual filming location wasn't available tonight. So we get this room with a window with a nice view of uh, utter blackness. It's like two in the morning right now. So anyway, we're going to be looking at the first three generations of Core i series ThinkPads. These are the ThinkPads that use the first three generations of Core i5 and i7 processors. So before you, we have the T410 and its thinner counterpart, the T410S, the T420 and its little counterpart, the T420S, and the T430. Sadly, I don't have a T430S to show you, but it's basically identical to the T420S other than the keyboard. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so up first we have the T410 and T410S. At first glance, these laptops don't look very different, but when you get closer, you realize that the T410S has basically lost a little bit of weight compared to the T410. It's a thinner and lighter laptop. Both have the same awesome classic design keyboard. In fact, they're interchangeable with each other. They feel great to type on, have great response, and great feel. Both have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio display with resolution options of 1280 by 800 or 1440 by 900. Both have a fingerprint reader optionally, though they're located in different spots. On the T410 it's closer to the touchpad, while on the T410S it's over by the arrow keys. Both laptops can take up to 8 gigabytes of RAM which is accessed through these bottom doors. However, the T410 also needs the keyboard removed to get to the other stick of RAM. Both laptops also have the famous ThinkPad draining holes on the bottom, which allow water to harmlessly pass through the bottom of the machine if water is spilled onto the keyboard. When it comes to I.O., the T410 definitely wins. It has four USB ports, a display port, VGA, Ethernet, Firewire, a 56K modem, an eSATA port, an Express Card 34 slot, and an SD card reader. One of the USB ports is an always on USB port, which can be used for charging phones, tablets, or MP3 players even if the laptop is turned off. The T410S has a more limited I.O. selection, which includes a display port, a USB port, an always on USB port, an eSATA USB combo port, a headphone jack, Ethernet, and an express card slot, which optionally could be configured to have an SD card reader built in. One of the most annoying aspects about the T410S is that it uses non-standard 1.8 inch hard drives, rather than the usual 2.5 inch hard drives. Good luck finding one of these, as they're hard to come by and they're usually more expensive than their 2.5 inch counterparts. Personally, I just recommend getting a 1.8 inch to MSATA adapter and putting an MSATA SSD in there, so you don't have to worry about any trouble later. Another disadvantage of the T410S is it just uses this lithium polymer battery on the bottom of the machine, rather than the standard 6 or 9 cell options available on the T410. While the T410S does offer the Ultra Bay battery to add some extra battery life to the machine, I have found that in my experience on a T410S or T420S that the battery life, even with an Ultra Bay battery, is still worse than a 9 cell battery on a standard T410 or T420. Time to move on to the T420 and T420S. In terms of design, they're fairly similar to their older counterparts, the main difference being that the T420 is a little bit thinner than the T410, and both laptops have moved to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio display rather than the 16 by 10 display used on the T410. The resolutions available for these were 1366 by 768 and 1600 by 900. These were the last generation of ThinkPads to use the classic 7 row IBM style keyboard. As usual, they feel great to type on. In fact, they're the same keyboards used in the T410 and T410S. When it comes to I.O., you have four USB ports on the T420, like the T410, Express Card, Display Port, VGA, Always On USB, and this is interesting. Rather than having both Firewire and a 56K modem, you either had one or the other, not both. 
The T420 was also the last ThinkPad to have the option for FireWire or a 56K modem. You also have the SD card reader, the optical drive, and all that other stuff. It uses the same docking connector as the T410, and the T430 also uses this same docking connector as well. The T420S brings something new to the table, support for USB 3.0, a first for the T-series of ThinkPads. Some models of the X220 also have USB 3.0 support, but not all. Other than that, the I.O. selection is fairly similar to the T410S. Another huge advantage of the T420S is that it uses standard 2.5-inch drives rather than the non-standard 1.8-inch drives, making it much easier to find replacement hard drives or solid-state drives for this machine. Time to move on to the T430, the ThinkPad that introduced the controversial chiclet keyboard, which is still found on ThinkPads today. On the T430, it really isn't that bad. It feels about the same as the T420 in regards to travel and feel. In fact, Lenovo even said that the T430 uses the same switches as the T420. Really, more of the problem is with the layout of the keys. Some function keys were relocated and others were completely removed. This is a huge pain to long ThinkPad users, which have 20 years of muscle memory that are now being disrupted by this change. Remember that before this, the layout of the keyboards hadn't really changed in 20 years. The T430's keyboard feels better than newer ThinkPads, as with the T440 and newer ThinkPads, they use different switches. Also, the T430 at least still has dedicated media keys for the volume and microphones, as opposed to newer ThinkPads which integrate them into the function row. Also, the T430 still had dedicated buttons for the track point, which was dropped on the T440 but then brought back on the T450 after heavy consumer response. The T430 is also the last ThinkPad to have the Think Light, the light that illuminates the keyboard from the top. With the T430, you also have the option for a backlit keyboard, however, mine here doesn't have that option. Frankly, I prefer the non backlit option as it has a more rough texture to the keys. The backlit keyboard has a smoother feel, which I don't like. When it comes to I.O., things are a little bit different on the T430. Gone are the 56K modem and firewire jacks. Also, the full-size display port has been replaced with the mini display port, however, it does not support Thunderbolt. Also, native support for USB 3.0 has been brought to the T430. Still have the express card slot, SD card reader, and always on USB port and the optical drive is the same one used in the T420. The docking connector is also the same. I don't have a T430S to show you, but it's basically identical to the T420S, except it uses the new style keyboard. Also, the T430 uses slimmer 2.5 inch hard drives, so the full thickness 2.5 inch drives won't work. I should also mention at this point that while the T410, T420, and T430 all use socketed CPUs, their S-suffixed counterparts use soldered processors, which cannot be upgraded. This is why I personally recommend the T420 or T430 over the S variants, as it makes upgrades easier down the line. The T430 was the last ThinkPad to have many of what I call classic design elements, such as the latched display, the think light to illuminate the keyboard, optical drives and express card slots coming standard, socketed CPUs that could be upgraded, and the full-size 9-cell batteries sticking out the back. The 30 series of ThinkPads were also the last ThinkPads to have the barrel-style power connector that had been used since the T60. Starting with the T440, Lenovo switched to a rectangular-style power connector, which is still used to some degree to this day, so it's being phased out in favor of USB Type-C. Alright, so, out of all these ThinkPads, which ones do I recommend? These two, the T420 and the T430. They're simply the most powerful ThinkPads you can get in this price range, and honestly, out of all the ThinkPads, old or new, these will give you the best bang for your buck. You can get these for around $200-$300. And they have performance that rivals most modern laptops. They will certainly beat any two to $300 laptop you can buy brand new. And especially a higher configured T430 will actually be more powerful than some of the newest ThinkPads. 
And if you really think about it, you're getting a really good deal here. You're getting one of these for, let's say, $250. That's about what these go for nowadays. You get one of these for $250. It has an i5 processor. You upgrade that to an i7, a quad core i7, so that's like another $100. So $350, $400, we'll say. And you compare that to an entry-level T-Series ThinkPad now, which goes for about $800. And this will already have a processor that can outperform that entry-level T480 or whatever. Now, a higher configured T480 might be a bit more powerful than this. But that higher configuration is going to cost you, like, more than $1,000. Probably upwards of $1,500, $1,600. So, you're really not gaining that much more performance over one of these. And this... <laughs> Like I said, $350, $400 with that upgraded processor compared to more than $1,000 for something that's only a tiny bit more powerful, if at all. This has a huge advantage in being a thicker, heavier laptop. It has better cooling. It has better power. With the newer ThinkPads that use Ultrabook processors, you're going to have to worry about thermal throttling a lot more than in one of these. The only other advantage that newer ThinkPads have is better internal graphics and more RAM. This takes a maximum of 16 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for most people, and enough to get by for the most demanding work. The newest ThinkPads do take up to 32 gigs of RAM, and the P-Series ThinkPads take up to 64 gigs, but most people aren't going to need that much RAM. And if you really need 32 gigs of RAM, you have the W series of ThinkPads. Also keep in mind that if you really need better graphics than what's offered on the internal graphics, you can use the express card slot and get an express card to PCIe adapter and get a full desktop graphics card that can hook into this with that adapter. And with that, you will be getting as good of graphics, if not better graphics, than what's on the newest ThinkPads. So you're really getting a great value here. You could get up to 16 gigs of RAM in this thing, a really nice i5 or i7 processor, even a quad core if you want to upgrade it to that. You have USB 3.0, you have Express Card for additional expandability, you have a 2.5 inch hard drive bay, an MSATA bay, as well as an optical drive that can be swapped out for another hard drive if you so need. And you can still get these for a great price, you can still get brand new batteries for these off of Lenovo's website. You'll be paying almost as much as these laptops are worth for that, but you can get them. And you can get them on Amazon for about half the price, and they're still genuine batteries. And with that BIOS trick that I showed in a previous video, you can actually get third-party batteries to work with one of these. The T420 is still a decent option, but you'll have to remember it's using older processors and older architecture. So the T430 is a better option if you really need the most performance. Also, this can handle a quad-core i7 with its basic cooling configuration. This has been known to thermal throttle a bit with the quad-core solution. And, of course, people are going to complain about the keyboard, but I recommend trying out the keyboard before you complain about it, because some people actually prefer it over the T420's keyboard, and if you really hate the T430 keyboard that much, you can swap in a T420 keyboard. There's plenty of videos explaining how to do this, and I did a video of my own showing me doing that with a X220 keyboard, putting it into an X230. These are definitely my recommendations of all ThinkPads, old or new. You're simply getting the best bang for your buck here. You're getting the best performance for the best price. Only the newest P-series ThinkPads are really going to be able to outperform one of these or a W530, and those are going to cost you way, way more than one of these. Again, $1,000 to $2,000 for a new ThinkPad versus a few hundred dollars for one of these. This is a great all-around computer for schoolwork, for video editing, photo editing, so you're going to want a better screen for color important photo editing and just on the go work. Yeah, it's not as thin or light as some of the newest Ultrabooks, but honestly, I don't mind that. Knowing that this thing is more durable than most of the newer Ultrabooks, I'm perfectly fine with it being a little bit thicker and heavier. So this is the last of the ThinkPad buying videos where I focus specifically on different models of ThinkPad. 
The next video is going to be geared more towards laptops in general and just what to look for with used or refurbished laptops. So stay tuned for that. I hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos and I hope to see you back for the next one. Have a good day and thanks for watching.